I just want to talk about one player in, in particular, Joby. End of October 2019, after the game against Crystal Palace, Grant Xhaka yeah. subbed, swore at the crowd, threw the armband to the floor, stripped of the captaincy, called the worst captain ever. Darren Bent, amongst others, said he hopes he never wears the Arsenal shirt again. How has he managed to rebuild himself so effectively that now they adore him? Yeah, probably, I'd say, got to be up there with the biggest turnarounds, I suppose, in, in Premier League history, I think, in terms of where he was and effectively out the door to now being mm. literally the first name on the team sheet. And I think certainly Mikel Arteta has to take a huge amount of credit. Obviously, a player who knows his position very well, but he has featured a little bit further forward. There's been a little tweak to that. I think he's certainly, you can see that quality there. And I think a lot of people would look at him as certainly years gone by, just a defensive midfielder, just mm. a sitter, but he's got a lot more to his game and he's really revelled in this, you know, certainly attacking role. I did a game a couple of weeks ago where it was a 50-50, looked like he was going to go flying in and he's actually just pulled out, Jeff. So I think he's playing with a lot more maturity mm. now. I think Mikel Arteta, Mikel Arteta has given him that responsibility to be a senior player. There's a lot of young boys in that squad and I think he's really relishing yeah. that role and he's, he's really flourishing. He's been... Absolutely magnificent. Mm. We started the last 25 Premier League games. So, Clinton, when do Arsenal fans start believing, not just that they'll finish top four, that they could win the league? Yeah, they'll be believing amongst themselves. Do I still believe? Mm, I'm not quite sure that they can win the Premier League, but I still, f I do think they're in contention and I do think they'll finish in the top four. They've been outstanding. Arteta, I said it many a times, the recruitment in the summer, brilliant. You bring in players like Jesus, Sinchenko, outstanding. And what it does, it gives the whole team a lift and that's what it's done. You've got players like Saka, Saka's been outstanding for a few years, but his game's gone to a different level. Odegaard in, in midfield, who's a brilliant, is the captain. Saliba, what a, him going on loan for the three years to Marseille, he's come back a different player. He's like a Rolls Royce at the back. So, They've been outstanding and Arsenal fans will believe, they'll definitely believe. This is a huge game. If they go 14 points of Liverpool, wow, mm -hmm. that is a big statement to be fair. And you've got to credit, everyone's playing with confidence. I thought it was a big statement last week, the result against Tottenham, because we know how Conte wants to set up, but Arsenal just blew, um, blew Tottenham away. They, they are the real deal at the moment. That, they are the real deal. I think it's a case of a manager being given a bit of time which mm. we don't often see. And he was under pressure when he first went in there. And maybe a few question marks. Was he cut out for a, a job at that level so soon? Yeah. But you can really see what Arsenal are now mm. under Arteta. They've got that nice mix. I think the forward boys in particular, what he's done with Ben White, mm. you know, in terms of yeah. playing him at right back. And you know, it just looks like a really good place to be now. You look at the Emirates yeah. atmosphere around the, the ground, yeah. you know, and I think the players are really, really feeding off that. And... Yeah, I think top four for sure. Mm. They they're impressionable, play. aren't they? I mean, he's yeah. the youngest team in the league. You know, they're all listening to him. It's easy when teams listen, uh, for, for the players to listen to the manager when you're winning every week. And that's what they're doing. I mean, we talk about how good Man City are. They're above them in the league. Mm. I mean, it's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. They play with such bravery. I mean, the North London derby is a good example because of the way Tottenham went about it and the way Arsenal. Arsenal opened mm. up the pitch. They took the ball in all areas. They drove forward. They were throwing bodies into the box. They were expansive in their positions with a very, very good counter-attack inside against them. Now... When can they? When does they start believing? Was the question, Jeff? I think that when they start believing is when they beat Liverpool's, when they beat, when they can go and beat Man City's. That is when everyone needs that, and that helped the dressing room as well. He's trying it. I mean, he's purchased brilliantly with them two players. I mean, it, with Saliba, I know, but obviously the two Jesus. winners. We're talking about winners yeah. there. Yeah. Someone who like Jesus' performances have been unbelievable because. He's not a different player now he's at Man City. He's just being loved, he's being cuddled. He's being cuddled by the manager who knows how to man manage. We talked about how he did it with Xhaka. Uh, oh, look, magnificent Arsenal at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> did I say that loud? <laughs> <laughs> you did. And, and, and you and Clinton have both mentioned William Saliba. So, Michael Dawson, yeah. here's a question for you. Right now, do you take William Saliba or Virgil van Dijk? Oh. I knew that was coming. Oh. <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> oh, look, I think Virgil is, is, is the best uh, around. I think he's magnificent. But what Saliba has done this year, you, the guys have touched on Jesus and Sinchenko, he's like a new signing. Yes, we never saw him in an Arsenal shirt once, I think, before, before this season. So, Mikel Arteta give a young player an opportunity and has he grabbed it with both hands? Wow. Look, I mean, people are talking about the next... He's got to do it consistently for a lot of lot of years to get to Van, Virgil van Dijk's level, um, you know. But he's had the opportunity, he's doing it at a big football club, top of the league, 
winning seven and only losing to Manchester United. This is a big test uh, against Liverpool, but the four Arsenal win, they fear no one. They fear no one, and that's credit to, to make Mikel Arteta. He touched on Xhaka. He has broad shoulders. What he went through, yes, it was down to his own doing, but wow, to come back to that, yeah, not many players do that. Yeah, not many. Respect, not respect. many players at all, so credit to him, he's playing. Mikel Arteta, giving him the opportunity to turn that around, so that's a credit. Like you say, a lot of people were calling for him to never play for the football club again, so both Mikel Arteta and Xhaka, they've just got a group of players how will they deal with the injuries if, if they do when and if they do come? Because they are the two wide Saka, Martinelli, Jesus, older guard, I think. I was one who questioned him to give him to the armband. Mm. The captain's Norway. He, he knows he's in the dressing room to say, look, you normally have a big yeah. vocal voice. He maybe has that. He might not. He plays like he has. He gets on the ball, he dictates things and they're playing with it with a confidence of freedom and, and they're getting the results and uh, they are where they deserve. Top defender, but yeah, answer, answer, answer the go. question. Answer yeah. the question. No, Virgil, oh, Virgil, I'll take Virgil van Dijk. I'll take Virgil van Dijk all the time. Good answer, Ma good answer. Mass massive fan, Saliba's got a lot of work to <laughs> yeah, get to there. Yeah. He's only young, he's only going to get better with age. Yeah, I mean, look, look be, no in terms of the title, if the title hasn't already gone for Liverpool, <laughs> this is must win, not draw. They, it's a must win game. And Joby, they, they have to start better. They concede the first goal in virtually every game. And the first half, unbelievably sloppy against Brighton. Yeah, and that's been, for me, the biggest issue, Jeff. particularly the way that Liverpool do play, and we've seen it and questioned it time and time again with certainly the full-backs and, and Trent probably in particular, but out of possession. And when you're going a goal down, Jeff, naturally the game is going to be more open because you then have to get yourself back in the game. And I think that's been certainly a, a massive issue. But just sloppy passes, I think there's been at times a lack of intensity about the press and they're not winning the ball high enough up the pitch and again for all the great attacking play with those forward three four that we've seen over the last years that work off the ball has been so so important I just don't think they've got to that level and they've, they've suffered because of it Jeff this season hmm. and if you look Tim um, at what they've got to come um, well look the next 23 days 23 days they have Rangers away on Wednesday City at home on Sunday, West Ham away at home on the Wednesday, Forest away on the Saturday, Ajax away on the Wednesday, Leeds at home on the Saturday, Napoli at home on the Tuesday. They have eight games in 23 days. And I look at their squad and I, I question whether they've got the squad to cope with that amount of games, difficult games too. Yeah, well, the Champions League, I think they've taken care of. Um, I think they'll, they'll be OK. They'll get to the next mm. stage of that. The Premier League is where... They need to start picking up points and obviously got a very difficult game. So it's a manager's job to juggle it around. I mean, he needs his best players for... They've done so well in the Champions League, I think they're, they're going to be OK. I think they're going to be fine. Napoli obviously was a, is a very tough game, but I think they're going to qualify to the next stage. They're not going to win the group, Napoli are going to do that anyway. So, um, you know, it's an opportunity to give the squad players an opportunity in the Champions League and, and let, let your big players stand up. I think they're... The, the huge player for me at the moment, I mean, everyone's on the Trent bandwagon and he's not defending that well. Um, but going forward, he's still magnificent in my eyes. But Virgil needs to pull his finger out. He's the leader. Mm -hmm. He's the person. At the moment, he's playing at his pace. Uh, he can't do that in the Premier League. I think he needs to show a little bit more urgency um, and leadership. I used to see him barking around at people, him and Henderson in the middle of the pitch and when Milner was playing. Um, and I think that's part of him. That's what I loved about him. Is he was a leader. He doesn't care who's upsetting. At the moment, it just looks like he's playing his own game. Um, I just think he needs to get a little bit nastier and stop being friends with his teammates.